1928, Jose Maria Escriva was a young priest in Madrid. While making a retreat, he saw that God was asking him to start a new Catholic institution, Opus Dei, which would spread the message that all persons can find God in their ordinary activities. He set to work, but the social and political situation was hardly favorable. During the 1930s, Spain suffered a great deal of ideological conflict and turmoil. Communists, fascists, socialists, anarchists, conservatives all fought with each other. In many ways, this mirrored the ideological conflicts in Europe, but in Spain, it took on a religious hue. Many of these groups saw the Catholic Church as a major obstacle to their plans for social and economic revolution, and therefore there was a great deal of anti-clerical violence. Growth was difficult and slow. By 1936, Opus Dei still had less than 20 members and only one small university residence in Madrid. And while Father Jose Maria was planning to expand to Valencia and Paris, the situation in Spain became dire. In July 1936, conservative elements in the army rose against the Spanish government, launching three years of civil war and a social and religious revolution that would leave more than 300,000 people dead. The military coup failed in Madrid and in most other large cities, but revolutionary violence broke out throughout the country. In Madrid, churches were sacked and burned, and a mammoth manhunt for priests and other prominent Catholics began. More than 7,000 priests and nuns would be assassinated. Father Jose Maria immediately closed the residence and began wearing layman's clothes. He had to keep moving, hiding for a few nights at a time in the homes of friends. He had several close calls, and several of his best friends were assassinated. In front of his mother's house, a mob hanged a man they had mistaken for him. He suffered deeply because he could not say mass or administer the sacraments. In October, Jose Maria found refuge in an insane asylum where he feigned madness. He celebrated mass often in his room, despite the danger of being discovered and denounced by members of the staff. He spent most of his day praying for the church, the members of Opus Dei, and for all Spaniards on both sides of the conflict. When the asylum was no longer safe, Jose Maria found protection in the consulate of Honduras. For six months, he, his brother, and four members of Opus Dei all lived in one small bedroom. He lost so much weight that when his mother came to visit, she didn't recognize him. He celebrated mass often, preached frequently, and helped the others to turn this forced inactivity into an opportunity to grow in their spirit of prayer and sacrifice. Despite the prevailing atmosphere of intense partisanship, he refrained from criticizing the Republican authorities or joining in celebration of nationalist victories. More than a year into the war, with no end in sight, unable to preach or say mass openly or pursue the development of Opus Dei, Father Jose Maria made a difficult decision to try to escape from the Republican zone, cross the Pyrenees Mountains into southern France, and re-enter Spain in the nationalist zone, where he could act publicly as a priest. Using false identification papers, he made his way from Madrid to Barcelona, where he and seven companions joined a group of refugees guided by smugglers. The entire enterprise was extraordinarily dangerous. In Barcelona, militia groups constantly checked ID papers, and in the mountains, border guards had orders to shoot on sight anyone trying to cross the border. Once he got to the mountains, St. Jose Maria was racked with doubt about whether he should continue on or return to Madrid to share the fate of his family and the members of Opus Dei he had left behind there. In the midst of that doubt, he asked the Blessed Virgin for a sign about what he should do, and he was given it in the form of a gilded wooden rose. With that, he decided to go forward. Nearly starved and weakened by months of inactivity, 
he barely survived the series of harrowing night marches through the mountains in the winter cold. Father Jose Maria spent the remaining months of the war in the city of Burgos. He began re-establishing contact with people he had known in Madrid. He preached frequently, gave spiritual guidance to many people who visited him, and traveled widely to see those who could not come to him. During these months, he also wrote The Way, a collection of spiritual maxims that would become an international bestseller. At the end of the war, Escriva was one of the first priests to return to Madrid. There he found the student residence in ruins and faced the task of building up the apostolic activities of Opus Dei all over again.